top five tools that every cyclist needs. The tools are inside these boxes. Big thank you to uh, Park Tool for sending me some tools to use as props for this video. Ooh, what is this? I'm gonna go through these top five tools in the order I would buy them in. So in order of priority, number one. A portable multi-tool. Number one tool, hands down. It has loads of tools on it, like this or like this. Loads of different parts on your bike are gonna be undone and done up with hex or allen keys. They look like this. They range from absolutely teeny tiny, like half a millimeter, uh, right up to eight millimeter or 10 millimeter, depending on the parts on your bike. You can get a very basic tool like this one for not much money. For a little bit more money, you can get one like this. As you can see, there's a few extra parts on it. This one in particular has a chain tool on it, which is really, really handy if you're out in the field. Obviously, it means this tool is gonna to be a little bit heavier than this one and more expensive. But if you're doing something like bike packing or gravel riding, and you're more likely to be out in the sticks and have to be a bit more self-sufficient, I would recommend one of these. Especially if we're trying to minimize contact in COVID-19 times, the chain tool can be really useful. This is my one that I carry with me. It's a park tool one, but other brands are available. Park tools in the UK, at least, are the most popular choice for riders and workshops alike because they're made well, they don't break, and the last thing you want is to be putting a soft bit of metal into your bolts on your bike and ruining them. Other benefits of the more basic tool is that the actual tools are longer. So you're gonna get more leverage, you've got a bit more reach as well, so you're able to get it into harder to access areas like behind derailers. Naturally, and for the sake of convenience, you might end up ditching this when you're at home and going for a full proper set of Allen keys like this. These ones are much longer and they also, can okay, focus on that, uh, they have a ball head, so you'll be able to use them at a slight angle and still get purchase on the bolts. These guys are really useful, but priority, one of them. Number two. An adjustable torque wrench. The force used to do up parts on your bike is commonly measured in Newton meters. This measures Newton meters. You can buy a whole range of fixed torque wrenches, but in a handy package you can get hold of adjustable ones. So this one, adjust at the bottom here, then you need the appropriate socket to attach on the end. Now the most common size of Allen key you're gonna find on your bike are four, five, and six, and there are cheaper versions, even made by Park, of adjustable torque wrenches that cover those bases. So you don't have to buy this and a bunch of sockets. You can go for a slightly cheaper option, which I'll flick up on the screen here. If you're doing up parts on your bike without one of these, you're guessing. How many times have you seen people's handlebars come loose or seat posts slipping? Having one of these completely fixes that issue. You can be sure exactly how much you're tightening up stuff by. Personally, I've managed to over tighten things in the past, exploded bolts. Not having one of these eventually ended up costing me more money because I had to get someone to help me remove the bolt out of the stem that I destroyed. So adjustable torque wrench, that's why it's in second on my list. Really handy tool to have. Number three. A chain wear checker or wear gauge. There's a few different styles of these, but they're all basically a piece of metal with some uh, flicky bits on. This will tell you how stretched or worn your chain is. It has two sides to it. You'll clip it on a link. If it goes through all the way, it means it's stretched to the point of that side. When it falls all the way through on the 0.75 side, that's 0.75% of stretch, then you need to change your chain. Otherwise, you start wearing out your cassette and chain rings and jockey wheels. And that becomes expensive. These guys are super cheap. Using one of these is gonna save you a lot of money in the long run. Chains can wear out quicker than you think, especially if you're riding in crappy wet weather like we have in the UK nearly all year. So get one of these guys, save yourself some money. One extra thing to add, the cleaner you keep your chain and the better you maintain it, the longer it will last. Watch my video on bike cleaning a few days ago. Shameless plug on my own channel. Number four. You're getting pretty well equipped now. Next one. Quick link pliers. Now, every chain that I've bought in the last couple of years, and this wasn't always the case, has a quick link in the packet. It's basically a special link you can pop in and out. Some of them you can do with your hands, but it's not very easy. It kind of gets seized over time. This tool is gonna let you take it on and off super easily. If you've got one of these lying around, it means you can take your chain off to clean it. If you've got one of these lying around, it makes it easier to pop one of those links off, take off your chain completely, clean it separately, and give access to all the other parts of your drivetrain that a chain would usually get in the way of. So if you wanna clean your jockey wheels or the back of a chain ring, taking off your chain is the best way to do it. This makes it a million times easier. It's just gonna make your life easier. Get one of these. Now, the last tool on the list, that's not really a tool, but it is the single most used bit of cycling equipment that I own, the work stand. Now I've left it to last on purpose because it's the most expensive one too. Seeing as you're gonna be clamping your bike on it, I think getting a good one 
is quite important. There are a few different types on the market. All of them fold down pretty small, so you can fit them in a shed or a corner of a room. I've been keeping this one just here. This room is pretty small. It doesn't get in the way too much. There are two main styles of design. I think this style with a clamp is more versatile. You can fit any bike to it. You can clamp the seat post. You do have to be careful clamping to carbon, but as long as you're sensible with it, it is okay. There are other types that kind of have a, a base and then the bottom bracket sits on one side and you clamp the fork through the quick release to the other side. Unfortunately, there's loads of compatibility issues now because there's through axle, then there's your half threaded Mavic speed release things, and it just becomes a bit of a nightmare. So this one's a lot easier to recommend. It's super sturdy and it gets used all the time. When you're working on your bike, being able to walk around it 360 degrees and see underneath it as well, it's gonna make your life easier and the jobs you're doing so much quicker. This is the kind of thing you're gonna get your hands on and wonder how you lived without it. Really hope you enjoyed. Top five tools that every cyclist needs. That's my top five list. I'm sure yours will be different. You guys will have some suggestions as well. So put them down in the comments if there's any tools that you wouldn't be able to live without. Please subscribe for more content like this and vlogs as well. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And thank you for watching.